Uh, the figures indeed are Morning. slower than forecast. Are they slower than your forecast? And with Wednesday looking to a rate meeting, uh, what do you expect now? How does it change things? Well, the number 2.6% is indeed slower than uh, both, both expected by the street and us. Uh, overall, I think I'll look into the details of why the relative uh, miss. I think if it's really uh, dependent on, on, on domestic consumption, if domestic consumption engine shows quite a bit of slowdown, then Bank of Thailand might, might, might be under less pressure to, to raise rates than before. But it's really, if it's really more export dependence uh, coming from the external side, then they, they'll continue to really uh, ramp up on the, on the inflationary uh, mode. And and, and continue to be on the hiking rate cycle. Do you still believe that they're going to raise rates by a quarter point to three and a half percent on Wednesday? There is still a uh, building chance effectively. Global uncertainties will re remain at, at the top of the list. Uh, as the seven members meet on this Wednesday, they're going to look into the headlines of the day, really. Uh, at the end of the day, however, if you take a step back, you have an economy that is still going to grow quite well, uh, effectively, especially because the government is quite keen to pursue expansionary policies. They will, of course, drive growth up, but also drive inflation up as well. So Bank of Thailand will look into this hawkish stance uh, further still. It's also, isn't it, about the Bank of Thailand trying to be independent, trying to push away what could be called maybe government interference. Indeed, I mean, over the past few weeks, you have pronouncements by the incoming uh, government, including a pronouncement by, by Deputy Prime Minister saying Bank of Thailand should cut rates by up to one percentage point. So now, for a central bank that is still very keen on preserving its independence, I think it comes at a balance where they, you know, a rate hike now would send a signal that, look, uh, we know what we are doing and we know what's needed for the economy now is really to pursue uh, the fight against inflation still. Well, then you're quite experienced. You've worked with the IMF again, also again, your main market here, Indonesia, Malaysia and Thailand. Uh, looking to, of course, the, the impact on Friday, post Bernanke's speech to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Maybe everyone's talking about it now. Quantum Division 3. On those three countries that you do follow, Indonesia, Malaysia and Thailand, what would be the impact, mm -hmm. William, if that were to happen? Overall, if you, if you believe the QE3 is, is going to happen and more capital inflows are going to come in, then uh, among the three countries and, and generally among, even, even within Asia, Indonesia will stand out as being one of the beneficiaries. I say that because uh, at the end of the day, Indonesia, more than any other country within the region, uh, I think uh, has, has quite a bit of domestic resilience. 240 million consumers that prove themselves to be worthy of uh, you know, probably investment grade quite soon. There's a good story going on and QE3 will probably be one, one of the drivers also of capital inflows further into the country. Overall, however, I think FDI inflow is really what the government is looking for, and already we're seeing some telltale signs of that happening. All very encouraging, saying positive, FDI inflow is very encouraging, etc. Indonesia will benefit, but clearly, if quarter of the basin three were to happen, uh, the inflationary impact on these Asian countries that you cover, and of course the rest of Asia, would be quite significant, wouldn't it? Indeed, I think, uh, I think the main driver is really the price of oil. Obviously, we wake up this morning to headlines of happenings in Libya. Uh, word still out whether, whether that's going to really have an impact on oil and how. At the end of the day, the, the, the fuel price indeed will be, will be the key thing to watch and indeed the, the main mechanism in which a QE3 is going to transpire into uh, domestic inflation within the countries. And well, then a final question for you. Post-elections, how do you view Thailand now? A far safer opportunity for an investor, even though you're an economist? We, we still see Thailand as being one of the more resilient economies on a relative basis. Obviously, uh, export continue to play a big role in the economy. Uh, but given the domestic front, on the domestic front, consumption is going to probably be boosted further by, by the incoming administration's policies, including talks about subsidizing uh, on first-time home and car purchases. So things like that, they're going to keep the domestic engine going. So overall, we, we still see Thailand as being one of, one of uh, good countries to be in, really.